Fundamentals of Cost Accounting. This topic is based on two books Managerial Accounting written by Garrison, Noreen, and Brewer. Management and Cost Accounting written by Drury. For more information, please visit the e-learning platform. By Karim Sharf. The Recommend Literature is the book of Drury. Management and Cost Accounting. All managers carry out three major activities, planning, directing, and motivating, and finally controlling. Planning involves selecting a course of action and specifying how the action will be implemented. The first step in planning is to identify the various alternatives. Next the alternative that does the best job of furthering the organization's objectives is selected. Management's plans are usually expressed in budgets. In addition to planning for the future, managers must oversee day-to-day -day activities to keep the organization running smoothly. Much of a manager's daily routine involves directing and motivating employees. Managers make work assignments, resolve conflicts, solve problems, and make many small decisions that affect both employees and customers. In carrying out the control function, managers seek to ensure that the plan is being followed. Feedback which signals whether operations are on target, is the key to effective control. One type of feedback that is very helpful to managers is called a performance report. Budgets are compared to actual results in performance reports to determine if operations are proceeding as planned. I repeat all managers carry out three major activities, planning, directing, and motivating, and finally controlling. There are five key differences between managerial accounting and financial accounting. Financial accounting reports are prepared for external users. Managerial accounting reports are prepared for internal users. Financial accounting summarizes past transactions. Managerial accounting has a strong emphasis on the future. Financial accounting focuses on precision. Managerial accounting aids decision makers by providing good estimates as soon as possible rather than waiting for precise data at some later time. Financial accounting is concerned with reporting for a company as a whole. Managerial accounting focuses on segments of a company such as product lines, sales territories, divisions, and departments. Cost is the value of economic resources used to achieve a specific purpose manufacturing costs are usually grouped into three main categories. Direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead. These costs are incurred to make a product. Direct materials are raw materials that become an integral part of the finished product and that can be physically and conveniently traced to it. Direct labor labor costs that can be easily traced to individual units of product. Manufacturing overhead consists of all manufacturing costs other than direct materials and direct labor. These costs cannot be easily and conveniently traced to products. These costs are also called indirect manufacturing cost, factory overhead, and factory burden. Examples include salaries for supervisors, janitors, and security guards, factory facility charges, etc. Manufacturing costs 1 include indirect labor costs that cannot be physically or conveniently traced to the creation of products. 2. Include indirect materials that are part of the finished product, but that cannot be easily traced to it. A manufacturing company incurs many other costs in addition to manufacturing costs. For financial reporting purposes most of these other costs are typically classified as selling or marketing costs and administrative costs. Marketing costs include all costs necessary to secure customer orders and get the finished product into the hands of the customer. Administrative costs include all executive, organizational, and clerical costs associated with the general management of an organization that are not classified as production or marketing costs. Costs can also be classified as period or product costs. Product costs include all the costs that are involved in acquiring or making a product. More specifically, it includes direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead. Consistent with the matching principle product costs are recognized as expenses when the products are sold. 
period costs include all marketing or selling costs and administrative costs. All selling and administrative costs are typically considered to be period costs. In this point we will compare merchandising companies and manufacturing companies Merchandising companies purchase finished goods from suppliers for resale to customers. Manufacturing companies purchase raw materials from suppliers and produce and sell finished goods to customers. Now, let's consider similarities and differences on the balance sheet for merchandising and manufacturing companies. Both merchandising and manufacturing companies will likely have cash, receivables and prepaid expenses. However, merchandising companies do not have to distinguish between raw materials, work in process, and finished goods. They report one inventory number on their balance sheet labeled merchandise inventory. Manufacturing companies report three types of inventory on their balance sheets. Raw materials, work in process and finished goods. Raw materials are the materials used to make the product. Work in process consists of units of product that are partially complete but will require further work to be saleable to customers. Finished goods consists of units of product that have been completed but not yet sold to customers. Total variable cost varies in direct proportion to changes in the level of activity. For example, your long-distance telephone bill may be based on how many minutes you talk. The total bill varies with the number of minutes used. Managers often need to be able to predict how costs will change in response to changes in activity. The activity might be the output of goods or services. While there are other ways to classify costs according to how they react to changes in activity, in this point we introduce the simple variable and fixed classifications. Until now we saw manufacturing costs, direct labor, manufacturing overhead, direct materials. Non-manufacturing costs, selling cost and administrative cost. In this point we will study predicting cost behavior variable and fixed costs. Although variable costs change in total as the activity level rises and falls, variable cost per unit is constant. For example, the cost per long distance minute may be 10 cents a minute. Fixed cost A cost that remains constant, in total, regardless of changes in the level of the activity. For example, your monthly basic telephone bill probably is a set amount and does not change based on the number of calls you make. They are fixed over the short term. Beyond that, they aren't fixed forever. As I said fixed cost A cost that remains constant, in total, regardless of changes in the level of the activity. However, if expressed on a per unit basis, the average fixed cost per unit varies inversely with changes in activity. The more local calls you make, the cheaper bill per local call it becomes. It is helpful to think about variable and fixed cost behavior in a 2x2 two two matrix, as illustrated here. Take a few minutes and review the summary of cost behavior for variable and fixed costs. Cost object anything for which cost data are desired including products, customers, jobs, organizational business unit, etc. For purposes of assigning costs to cost objects costs are classified two ways. Direct costs are costs that can be easily and conveniently traced to a unit of product or other cost object. Examples of direct costs are direct material and direct labor. Indirect costs are costs that cannot be easily and conveniently traced to a unit of product or other cost object. An example of an indirect cost is manufacturing overhead. It is important to realize that every decision involves a choice between at least two alternatives. The goal of making decisions is to identify those costs that are either relevant or irrelevant to the decision. Costs and benefits that differ between alternatives are relevant in a decision. All other costs and benefits are irrelevant and can and should be ignored. Relevant costs and revenues are future costs and revenues that will be changed by a decision. Irrelevant costs and revenues are those will not be affected by the decision. Irrelevant costs are unaffected by management's actions. For example if you are faced with a choice of making a journey using your own car or by public transport, the car tax and insurance costs are irrelevant since they will remain the same whatever alternative is chosen. However, petrol costs for the car will differ depending on which alternative is chosen and this cost will be relevant for decision making. Differential costs or incremental costs 
is a difference in cost between any two alternatives. A difference in revenue between two alternatives is called differential revenue. Differential costs can be either fixed or variable. For example, assume you have a job paying 1,500 euros per month in your hometown. You have a job offer in a neighboring city that pays 2,000 euros per month. The commuting cost to the city is 300 euros per month. In this example, the differential revenue is 500 euro and the differential cost is 300 euro. Opportunity cost is the potential benefit that is given up when one alternative is selected over another. For example if you were not attending college, you could be earning 15,000 per year. Your opportunity cost of attending college for one year is 15,000. Now, let's look at the quality of conformance. The term quality has many meanings. Quality can mean that a product has many features not found in other products, it can mean that it is well designed. Or it can mean that it is defect free. Quality of conformance is the degree to which the actual product or service meets its design specifications. Anything that does not meet design specifications is a defect and is indicative of low quality of conformance. Now, let's look at the quality of conformance. The term quality has many meanings. Quality can mean that a product has many features not found in other products, it can mean that it is well designed, or it can mean that it is defect free. Quality of conformance is the degree to which the actual product or service meets its design specifications. Anything that does not meet design specifications is a defect and is indicative of low quality of conformance. There are four broad categories of quality costs. Prevention costs, appraisal costs, internal failure costs, and external failure costs. Prevention costs are incurred to support activities whose purpose is to reduce the number of defects. Appraisal costs are incurred to identify defective products before the products are shipped to customers. Internal failure costs are incurred as a result of identifying defects before they are shipped to customers. External failure costs are incurred as a result of defective products being delivered to customers. Here are some examples of each type of quality cost. Thank you for watching.